All right, so we've been working on a lot of your anatomy. We've been going over the different names of the muscles and some of the places where they, they connect to the body, uh, more close to the center of the body, and where they connect to the periphery of the body, uh, where they originate and where they insert. And we've introduced packages of muscle and how the muscles actually fire and they work, and this gives us a concept of, of all the contraction that goes on. The next part of this that's going to be very important is, is how muscles create systems. And this isn't, this isn't the common vernacular, possibly. So this is really important for us on our yoga. So if we have a, have a muscle, and it's got its, its striations, we know that there is something that holds this muscle um, uh, as, a, as a package, uh, kind of like a casing. Uh, dare I say, like a hot dog casing. And so, at least on the periphery, and it, and it is much more, there is a casing of this muscle belly. A lot of times we'll call it a muscle belly. And this is going to be our fascia. Now, the connective tissue, the fascia that creates this compartment, it continues and it changes... It changes in its, uh, in its density and its matrix a little bit, um, and eventually, this typically is going to connect to something like a, a bony protrusion. And as it connects into the bony protrusion, this connective tissue eventually just basically turns into the outer layer of the bone there, and this creates a very, very solid connection. Now the neat part about this is if this is the muscle belly or the muscle compartment, the connective tissue that wraps around it, and there is, there is actually a tissue on the inside that's related to this connective tissue too, so it's not like it's just a, a watery sack of muscle. This can, can not only like run into the bone, but it can actually run along parts of the bone and then actually go and connect this is, this is not a literal bone in the body, so uh, don't, be, don't try to figure out where this is exactly in your body. But say we have a bony protrusion here, this can actually run along and connect to a, this would be a really large muscle, but connect to another muscle. And so now we have Now we have these two muscles, and this is, the, this is what I'm calling our bony area. But the same connective tissue line comes and connects these two bones, or these two muscles, sorry about that. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we have a more definite end. So now we have two muscles, and these are going to connect to different bones. This is our bone going behind the muscle, and our big muscle is kind of out here. But this brings on the idea that these different muscles, this muscle and this muscle, are not separate. And even when you try to contract just this muscle, this contraction is going to create a tension on the connective tissue that runs all the way down here. And so this muscle might not seem to contract like this muscle does, but there'll be an, an integration between the two along the line of connective tissue. And if we do decide to connect more than one or two or three muscles, in a line of connective tissue, so along a line of, of fascia, this will be like a, um, we can almost think like chain links. And sometimes, sometimes uh, if you look at all of the links, the links might be, the individual links might be muscle bellies, but the, the tracks, if you do this, you might be able to put like a track, so there might be individual bellies along these links, but these links are going to create kind of like a 
train or a railway system. This is one of the terms that's popular these days is a, is a train, anatomy trains. And trains of fascia band or connective tissue. But what this is going to create is a system. So this muscle is no longer independent. And if I contract these well, I can coordinate movements from one part of the body to the other rather than just having this kind of robotic thing where I contract this muscle and the only effect on the body is that it moves this right here. And that's just not the truth. It actually affects many other areas of the body, even when you don't see them move on the outside. And so integrating the body becomes much easier in concept when you don't have a bunch of individual compartments. We actually have systems Uh, for now, we're going to say systems of muscles. And they are connected by fascia or connective tissue. Uh, not all connective tissue is, is always called fascia. Um, it changes sometimes in the density and the matrix of it. So systems of muscles. And it's not necessarily just the individual bones and the muscle that moves it, but it's an entire system because at times we can connect without actually creating a lot of movement, we can, we can connect many different body parts and initiate a movement uh, way out in one area of the body where there's not a lot of movement, sorry. Initiate the action way out at the periphery and actually have an effect in an entirely different area of the body. And this works on coordination, it also works on injury stuff. So a lot of times we'll see a, a deviation in one area of the body because the tension along the connective tissue is high or low because of injuries that have happened in a different region. So the entire track or the train or the system is somehow off and you're seeing the effect in one area, even though it's kind of originating in a different area of the body. This is a beautiful thing. This means that when we do our asana, our yoga postures, or our yoga work, we are creating a systemic movement or a systemic effect, not just in blood circulation or breath circulation or lymphatic circulation, but we're creating uh, systemic effects also in movement and tension and even vibration by other means. And this is just the introduction to this as well. And you could actually go on and, and create another body protrusion. You can see how much I like the grease board. And then have this kind of go over that and have another little muscle belly here. This is me creating my own scary little fascia monster. And uh, we'll have even more fun with it. We'll just put a hand here. And, yeah, so imagine you could create an effect here in uh, the stability, the mobility, the functional ability of this limb, this four leaf clover hand, and you could uh, positively or negatively affect all of those qualities here stability, mobility, functional ability of this. And this could be affected by something that's three or four or five muscles away just because it's all in the same tract of connective tissue. So that's your introduction to our systems of muscles and maybe an introduction for you to fascia and how this creates uh, some of our movement in the body and translates movement from one area to another uh, by a lot of different means. We're going to talk more about different muscles and how this can be set up much more specifically in different regions of the body.